I'm Renee Fisher. I direct Community Affairs for Kathleen Rice, District Attorney of Nassau County, and I'm former Chief Counsel of the National Treatment Alternatives to Street Crime Programs. And with me today, we have Teresa Corrigan, who is Chief of the Nassau District Attorney's Street Narcotics and Gangs Unit. And also special guest, uh, John Austin, who is Assistant Special Agent of the DEA and is in charge of the uh, Long Island Regional Bureau. And we're here today to talk a little bit about what's growing to become quite a problem, which is the heroin crisis here on Long Island. Uh, so let's get right into it. And uh, John, from a f federal and statewide national bureau, how bad is this problem? Well, we have seen an increase in heroin over the last several years um, in about 15 states. Uh, it, it has been spread out, um, no particular area. Uh, and New York in particular is one of those states that have been, been impacted by uh, the increase in heroin. Probably for the past 20 years or so, uh, New York has been and remains one of the uh, primary heroin markets in the eastern part of the United States. Uh, we know from our investigations that a lot of the heroin that comes out of New York goes as far south as uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, as far west as Detroit, far north as Vermont, and certainly as far east as Long Island. Um, and within the state, we have also seen an increase in uh, the use of heroin in Albany, Buffalo, Syracuse. So there has certainly been a trending of more uh, use of uh, heroin in the metropolitan area. Really? And again, from the larger area, where is it coming from? Well, there's two primary locations that heroin um, comes from in the United States. South American her heroin, which is primarily in Colombia and Mexico. Together, they probably provide about 80 to 90 percent of the heroin that enters the United States. Colombia got into the business in the early 1990s, uh, when at that time you could probably buy a kilo of heroin for between seventy-five and one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. It made good business sense because they already had the infrastructure in place uh, in order to distribute and transport the heroin into the United States because of the cocaine. Um, during that period of time, a kilo of cocaine it was selling for between twenty-five, thirty, maybe forty thousand dollars a kilo. So, uh, from a business perspective, the profit margin was far greater in heroin than it was in cocaine. So as a consequence to that, they got into the business and within several years, they pretty much dominated the market. Surprisingly though, over the last couple of years, we've noticed that uh, production and cultivation of, of heroin in Colombia has receded a bit. However, uh, in Mexico, we have seen a tremendous increase in heroin production. 2005, uh, Mexico was responsible for eight metric tons of heroin. Now, as far as 2007, 2008, it's 38 metric tons of heroin. That heroin is going only in one direction and is entering the United States. No, this is really frightening. Now, Terry, here in, uh, on Long Island, what are you seeing from the district attorney's point of view? We're seeing a large increase in the number of individuals entering the criminal justice system for participation in either selling heroin or possessing heroin. And the people that we're seeing come into the system are actually younger in age uh, than we'd ever had before. A lot of them are coming into the system addicted to the drugs that they are possessing and selling. Um, and we're seeing a lot of people having issues with being able to handle any sort of court sentence um, and being able to handle just life in general because of their addiction to these drugs. That's unbelievable. I, I understand that uh, the DA's office has done some special strategies, I think, along Terrace Avenue. We have. Um, on Terrace Avenue, we did a crime reduction program that looked at the individuals in that neighborhood that were solely responsible for the drug trade. We gave those individuals who were nonviolent people an opportunity to go straight or go straight to jail. And once we provided those individuals with the services they needed in order to have a law-abiding life, they took an opportunity that was given to them. They, they grabbed on, they held on, they did it, they turned their lives around, and in so doing, they and the community that they were terrorizing were able to take back their streets, take back their community, and say to outsiders, no more drug dealing here. We like our community safe. We like our community without drug dealing. And those individuals have helped 
the crime go down, and the community has helped the crime go down in that particular neighborhood. This is pretty exciting, and I think we've all learned that working together is what works best. Absolutely. Right. And so, you know, I, I, I ask you, John, what kind of collaborative efforts are you doing with the between the feds and, and, the, and the local police and the district attorney's office? Well, let me say this. I think one consensus that we have is that you cannot arrest your way out of this problem. Uh, in my 20 plus years in this, in, in this field, um, I think that generally you can pretty much get drugs if you work hard enough to get it. Having said that, it may seem counterintuitive to most people that the DEA would be interested in doing more than just arresting people. To that point, we have uh, partnered with treatment programs because we wanted to make sure that we got out and discussed that message and they realized how dangerous it has been. Uh, through an education program over the past school uh, over the past uh, school year we've been in 44 schools in Long Island and Nassau felt that was important because we wanted to get upstream and have that conversation with young adults and parents before we met them downstream uh, because once you reach the criminal justice system the conversation is non-existent with respect to the education I mean with respect to the enforcement uh, we have partnered with the district attorney's office uh, Nassau and Suffolk County Police Departments um, Historically, DEA may not have necessarily looked at some of the lower level drug traffickers, which is really where the impact is most felt. We have directed our investigations in there. Um, our seizures are up approximately 17% because uh, we, we not only look at the major drug traffickers, we started looking at um, some of the lower level traffickers, what I would like to call quality of life issues because that's where people feel it the most. Well, that's an, an absolutely in, incredible. And uh, Terry, with the DA's office, uh, what kind of work are we doing with the police department? We're working closely with the police department in the enforcement efforts. We, uh, in our efforts to go after the major dealers, the for-profit dealers, obviously we tend to scoop up some of the users also who redistribute at a more local level. But we're working with the Nassau County Police Department and with DEA and with other agencies to find where this heroin is coming from. If it's coming, coming from our neighboring counties, Queens, Brooklyn, we will work with those law enforcement agencies also to get to the source. The whole point of this is if we can get to the source, maybe we can stop the flow from coming in. But what people have to realize is as long as there is a demand for the product, we can arrest hundreds of people. There's always going to be someone else ready to sell because there's someone waiting to buy which is why it's so important for us to prevent people from wanting to use these drugs. We've got to work on the prevention end. That makes the law enforcement end so much easier because then we're just attacking dealers rather than scooping up and bringing into the system so many addicts who really, really need help with what they've wrapped themselves into. And the prevention is something we want to talk about. I've heard from our prevention groups, and I know uh, we're all participating on the Heroin Prevention Task Force, so we've work together, that it's not just heroin, that there are other drugs that are gateway drugs or that are being uh, equally uh, abused. What about some of the other drugs that parents should be worried about? From my perspective, um, we know and we have seen that there is a, a, a connection between young people using alcohol and marijuana and then surprisingly going to prescription pills before they get to heroin. When I do a lectures uh, out on, on, in the community, I often say to parents, people don't wake up in the morning and go, today I think I'm going to be a heroin addict. It certainly doesn't work that way. There is a progression that occurs that gets people to that point. So it's equally important that as law enforcement, we don't close our eyes to all of the other substances out there and just concentrate on heroin. We have to keep concentrating on problems with alcohol, problems with marijuana, problems with cocaine. We can't ignore those either. Well, we really are on to a very, very good topic. We're going to be taking a little break right now, and then when we return, we'll pick up on the world of prevention. Thank you.